Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today for Quick Tip Thursday. Today's session is how to remove high ISO image noise using Topaz Denoise. This is going to be a very quick intro into the program and just a quick rundown through the pretty standard workflow that we go through for removing very difficult high ISO noise. And the reason I wanted to make it a Quick Tip Thursday is just to show you how quick the process can actually be once you understand the program. We are going to be using this image that you're looking at on screen, and if we scroll into 100%, you start to see the real issues um, once we get there. Let's see here. So here you can really start to see the color noise, contrast noise, even banding noise that's happening within this um, image. Just so you have um, an idea of what the settings were, uh, this was taken with a Canon 5D Mark II, and this was at, um, let's see here, f4, 1 32nd of a second, and the ISO was 25,600. So this is the highest ISO that was available for the camera at the time. No flash was used because the flash looked really bad within this setting. But I knew that I could take this image and then bring it into denoise to resolve the image noise, even at this level. So that's what we're going to be covering here today. So let me go ahead and show you this really quick before and after. So here is before. You have banding noise over here on the left-hand side. You have major color and contrast noise. And we're able to get rid of this. I did this within about five minutes within Topaz Denoise. So let's go ahead and hop on in with this original background image. And I'll just make another background copy, turn off the um, one that we already worked on, and then just take this into Topaz Denoise, Topaz Labs, Topaz Denoise. If you're unfamiliar with Topaz Denoise, um, it will uh, oh, here we have our new interface with our new guide here. So I'm just going to skip this for now, but this can give you a really quick run through as well. But if you're unfamiliar with Denoise, it will open up at 200% automatically. So you can just click to 100% if you'd rather work at that level, which I do tend to work at 100% usually. I'm going to press reset all over here on the bottom right, and we're going to start working. Over here on the left-hand side is going to be our presets panel, and if you've previously saved a preset with the same settings that you use to take uh, the image that you're working on. So if I had a whole batch of images and I already um, set a preset for um, a batch of images that was taken at 1 32nd of a second with F4 and um, 25,600 ISO, I can just come over here and apply the preset and I'm done. But if I'm working on an image for the first time, I'm going to come over here to the right hand side to my settings and parameters and begin there and manually remove my noise. So the, before I do anything else, over here on the top right, we have our preview navigator area. And one of the most important things that I find in, in my denoise workflow is to set this preview navigator exactly where I need it. Um, and hopefully, within the view of what I'm looking at on screen, I can see three different tonal regions, my shadows, my highlights, and my midtones. Here we are able to see that. I do want to kind of take this down a little bit more shadowy over here on the left-hand side. All right, so we have some pretty heavy shadows over here on the left-hand side, some great highlights over here on the top right, and some really nice mid-tones in the floor over here on the lower right of the image. Now that I've found an area of my image that has all three of these, I don't need to sit here and move my preview navigator all around during this whole process. I only need to find another area at the detail recovery stage of my process. So now that I've done that, let me tell you uh, the really important things that you need to know within the right-hand side. And one of those is going to be our preview modes. Sometimes people don't even use these preview modes. And it is essential to getting the most out of Topaz Denoise, especially when you are using really high ISO settings like this or trying to eliminate really difficult, contrasty, um, colorful noise like this. These preview modes will allow you to view the image in several different ways to allow you to view all the different types of noise that are actually happening within this image. The RGB is a great starting point when you go into your image and it's a great ending point, but we don't use it during the actual noise reduction process, or I don't particularly use it. 
So th those preview modes are important. The next step in the process is going to be your noise reduction process. And here is where the main technology behind denoise is and where you're going to resolve most of your image noise issues. So we'll talk about that here more in just a minute. Below that is our detail recovery area, and that's where we'll recover and refine the original image detail. And denoise is amazing. Sometimes it even actually brings out image detail that has been hidden by the noise that you don't even see within the original image. So that is great. And also, this is the area where you'll add grain back into your image. And a lot of um, people might say, you know, why are you adding grain back in your image if you're getting noise? This is a very fine monochromatic grain that gets added back in because sometimes when you reduce a ton of noise like we're about to do, it starts to look a little plasticky and, and kind of a fake um, texture on the image. So that grain starts to bring back in that natural image feel. Lastly, we have our debanding area, and that's to eliminate banding noise. And if you're unfamiliar with banding noise, it basically appears as colored lines that are going to extend for certain lengths throughout your image. It's difficult to see, but if you're dealing with a very high ISO at very low light settings like this, majority of the time your sensor is going to be producing or showing banding noise in the image. You can see it down here on the um, bottom right. It almost looks like a grid placed across this mid-tone region of the floor. And we have both horizontal and vertical. If you see or suspect that there's banding noise happening in your image, I always say start off with it. And all I'm going to do is click on this banding noise. I'm going to get rid of, rid of my horizontal, and I'm going to get rid of my vertical banding noise. And the banding width of 20 is a pretty standard banding width that's going to eliminate the majority of the banding noise. Here's before. Here's after. Let me show you that one more time. It can be very difficult to see, except especially on a webinar. But you can definitely see it on your own screen. It almost looks like a grid pattern has been removed. Here's before and after. So a lot of those colored lines have been removed now and now that I have done my debanding I'm happy to go into my noise reduction process. So when you're working in your noise reduction process this is when you will be viewing the image in several different viewing modes. For the first three sliders which is your overall strength, shadow, and highlight adjustments you're going to be concentrating on your contrast noise which is best seen within the luminance preview mode and that's called luma up here you just click on that and it will take your image to a grayscale image so it eliminates some distracting things that you don't need to look at whenever you're eliminating contrast noise and that's specifically your color noise especially so we've gotten rid of that color noise and now that we are in the luma mode we can see all these different um, big pieces of almost, they look like grain, um, but that's your contrast noise. If you have really heavy shadows like we do over here on the left-hand side, sometimes actually taking your auto brightness up to um, an area that really starts to, or a, a level that starts to really bring out that shadow noise even more is great. So we have something called normal and strong or off. Off is great when you're in R RGB mode, but otherwise I like to take this up at least to normal. So that's where we'll stay here for the Luma mode. And again, the first three sliders are Luma mode. So you take your overall strength, and your overall strength is going to work on the overall image noise, both your color and your contrast, but focus in on your contrast first because that's really what you want to work on with um, this overall. The other area that you need to make sure that you take a look at when you're working with your overall strength is your mid-tones specifically. Because you can come in with your shadows and highlights and actually fine-tune those areas, so your overall strength needs to be um, really focusing on those mid-tones. And once you get it to an area that you like and you see that you still have heavier noise within your shadows and maybe lighter noise within your highlights, that's okay because you can come down to your just shadow and highlight and still fine-tune those. You'll usually find that your shadow uh, areas will display noise a little bit more heavily, so I always tend to take this up. So I'm focusing in over here on this left-hand side, and I'm going to keep focusing in. I notice that it starts to block up a little bit, and that's because my correct black level slider is at 1. I'm going to take that down to 0, and we're going to work with that in the RGB mode. So that starts to open up those shadows areas again. I can really see what's happening with the noise now. So I'm just going to keep taking that up and eliminate as much of that shadow noise as I can. And it's definitely starting to smooth out and disappear. It's looking pretty good. Now my adjust highlight, usually this will display much less 
noise, apparent noise. So I usually actually take that down and decrease the noise um, removal and bring back some noise and detail within my highlights. So now that we've done these first three, which again are focusing on this contrast noise, here's before and here's after. I'm going through this very quick, so it might not be the very, very best ending here, but you'll get the idea, and it'll be a very um, usable image here at the end. Once we're done with this Luma preview mode, or I'm sorry, once we get down to this adjust color red slider, you change your preview mode to the red channel noise mode. And there you can view your red channel noise. Here's before. And this is after the first three sliders. And now we can fine tune that red channel noise and decrease more. What you want to focus on here is the large areas of tone within your um, view, uh, your preview. So I'm focusing down here on the lower right or the large areas of um, shadow tone. And my goal is just to smooth those areas out and eliminate any sort of texture or pattern that still remains in those large areas of tone. Now, you don't need to eliminate all these actual edges that are coming from the detail within your image, but again, focusing only on the large areas that don't have any detail within there, that's the area you want to smooth out. So here's before and after. Once you're done with that and you get down to your blue adjust color, you go into your blue preview mode and that will show you your blue channel noise. So here's before. This is what we've done so far, and now we're just going to fine tune it and again focus on those large areas of tone and just smooth out, eliminate any sort of patterns that are happening. Once you get to a point that looks pretty good, you're okay to move on to your clean color slider. Once you get to your clean color slider, you'll want to go into your color preview mode. Here's what we've done so far. This is before in our color mode and this is after we've eliminated a ton of color noise already. In your clean color mode, what you're really wanting to focus on is the edge color noise that's still left over and any large patches of color haze that might be in these um, larger areas of tone. So there's a little magenta haze happening and there's also some noise along these edges. So as you take that clean color slider up, you'll start to see that that's just cleaned up a touch for that final image. Then when you get down to your correct black level slider, you want to go back into your RGB mode because that's where you can really tell what your black levels are doing. And whenever you're working in your RGB mode, you want to turn your auto brightness off because you want to see what the image is actually doing. So here's what we've done so far. Here's before and after. And what you're looking at with your correct black level slider is any of the haze or color casts that might be left over in your shadow area. So over here on the left side, you can kind of see magenta and blue left over. If you want to bring those shadows closer to black, go ahead and take your correct black level slider up and just pay attention to those black levels until they get to um, a shadow depth that you like. Once you're done with your noise reduction process, then you move on to your detail recovery process, and that I actually continue to stay in my RGB mode, but I do move my preview navigator to an area of my image that actually has some detail. So over here, I'm kind of looking at the, um, the numbers to really keep an eye on the detail, and here's where I'll recover my detail. And this is the most important slider for detail recovery process for me. Um, much more important than the reduced blur. The detail recovery really uh, gets the majority of that detail to be, uh, be brought back into your image. While the reduced blur can sometimes, especially in large areas of tone, add back in some artifacts. So I tend to uh, not get as close to, or not use that as much. The add grain, also very important. Um, as we've removed a ton of color noise and contrast noise, it kind of feels like I've removed um, the natural texture of this image, which can be added back with this monochromatic fine grain. So I'm just going to take that up to about maybe 0.3. And it's a very soft, uh, it's almost not noticeable unless you're sitting in front of the screen like I am, but it helps with just adding back in that natural um, perceived detail. So I think we've done pretty good at this point. Um, we are coming to the end of 
our 15 minutes. It's actually a few minutes past, so I am sorry about that, going a little bit over. But let's go ahead and just process this back really quick, and let me show you the before and after. And again, this was done very quickly. If um, I was just going through the method, I would go through the same method except work a little bit faster not explaining it. And within about 10 minutes, I can get a great result with a very heavy ISO, uh, ISO noisy image like this. So let's take a look at this over here in some of the worst areas. Here's before. And after, again before, and after, and altogether a much cleaner image, removing that heavy noise, all different types of noise, while still maintaining the clearness and crispness that I wanted within that detail. So now I can save this as a preset within Denoise and use this particular preset. It's my whole batch of images that I took in this underground wine cellar area where I used the same settings. So I hope this gives you a quick intro guide into how to properly use Denoise. All right, thanks again, everybody, and we'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.